Of smoking, I'm going to show you how to make smoked tri tip. Now, tri tip is one of my favorite cuts of meat. My wife Monica really loves it, and we used to eat it on a regular basis when we lived in California. But since moving to Wisconsin, it is kind of a little bit harder to find. Not impossible, but it's not something I can pick up on a regular basis. So when I saw my local uh, butcher, in town was selling tri-tip I figured you know what I haven't had it in a while so I picked up a couple now these aren't the biggest tri-tips that I've ever seen in my life uh, they're certainly not uh, compatible to the huge ones I used to get in California but hey beggars can't be choosers okay <laughs> so I got that's why I picked up two so I got two tri-tips I'm not sure how much they weigh maybe a pound and a half a piece something like that and this is going to be super easy guys I have some kosher salt and use a rub of your of your choice. I'm using Grillmates Montreal Steak Seasoning. And normally I sous vide cook these to guarantee they're the perfect medium rare. But since these are so thin, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to throw it on my auto Kamado. We're going to smoke them at around 250 till they get up to maybe around 120, 125 degrees. I'm going to pull them off, let them rest for around 10 minutes while I get that uh, fire cranked up super hot for a quick sear. And that's it guys, dinner will be served. Super easy, super delicious. So stick around guys, I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Let's get cooking. Alright guys, now I'm going to try something different that I've never tried before, but I saw this probably around six months ago uh, on a YouTube video, and for the life of me, I can't remember who it was, so I apologize. I normally like to give credit uh, to people when I see ideas and I try them, especially if they turn out good. Now what, what people usually do, myself included, with a good piece of beef or even pork, is you dry brine it meaning you put some salt on there and you let it penetrate the meat whether it's a salty rub or sometimes just salt by itself now since I am going to be using this Montreal steak seasoning uh, to season this and this does have some salt in it uh, what I'm going to do first I just got regular kosher salt and I'm going to apply a good amount of kosher salt on these and then I'm just going to let them hang out here on the counter for around 10 minutes not a long time uh, you can go all the way up to 15, 20. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to rinse them really well under cold water, kind of remove all that excess salt, and that's when I'll apply the rub. Now I think, I've never tried this before, like I said, so this is the first time for me, but in theory, what I think is going to happen is having this salt sit on here for around 10, 15 minutes, it's just going to allow that salt to penetrate the meat and help the meat maintain its juiciness and its moisture level okay but we don't want to leave it on and then put the rub on because it's going to be way too salty so that's why we're going to rinse it so just like that guys i'll put a good amount of salt on it these are pretty thin so you know you don't have to go crazy obviously if you have a bigger cut uh you know apply salt accordingly and this will work with any kind of meat guys you know whether it's uh, pork beef chicken it's called dry brining and it is a really great way to make sure that whatever you're cooking or smoking is going to maintain its juiciness voila so just like that guys I'm gonna set these on the counter just like this for 10 minutes I'll come back, I'll rinse them very well under cold water, and then we'll apply that Montreal steak seasoning. As simple as that, guys. We'll see you in 10 right, minutes. Guys, so it's been 10 minutes exactly. I don't know if you can tell, and you know, I'll have to go back and look at the 
original shot, but it definitely looks like it, the meat's already taken on a, a deeper red color. And you really can't see much of the salt. Most of it's kind of soaked up into the meat. This is called, again, dry brining. This is gonna help it maintain its juiciness. So I'm gonna go take each piece, rinse it under the sink in cold water until I make sure all that salt is removed. And we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, I rinsed them off real well. So you don't need a binder, they're still wet. I didn't dry it off with a paper towel or anything. Like I mentioned, use your favorite beef rub. I'm using uh, the Grillmates Montreal Steak Seasoning. I think any, everyone around the country can probably find this Montreal Steak Seasoning, not necessarily by Grillmates, but by whoever. It's pretty good on beef. If you know how this works, put it in the pan. This has got a lot of salt, coarse black pepper, and what I also love about Tri-Tip, guys, besides it tasting really good, is it, it doesn't take long to cook, especially these. These are kind of thin, so normally I would kind of smoke these at 250 to 275. I think I'm going to put it on the smoker at 225 uh, because I want it to kind of hopefully get some smoke and charcoal flavor. Whether or not I am successful with that, because I think this is going to... We're gonna pull this off at around 120 degrees and looking at how thin these are, I'm thinking I'm gonna hit 120 degrees probably really, really quickly. I mean, look how thin. But you know, it's like a big steak. This is so coarse, I'm trying to get it to get out of the bottle. But that's it guys. Since dinner is not gonna be ready to be served for a few more hours, I'm just gonna stick this tray in the fridge and now we're gonna let this seasoning kind of soak in for the next hour or two. Monica's gonna be making some potatoes. So I'll wait till she gets uh, all that stuff cooked. The other thing I mentioned is I did cut off some big pieces of fat. It's okay if there's a little bit of fat, but yeah, if there's big clumpy fat, the stuff that doesn't render down, cut that stuff off. So there you go guys, your favorite rub, just like so, not very complicated, super easy, super delicious, in the fridge it goes, and uh, you know what, <clears throat> since I'm waiting for Monica to get started on those potatoes, I'll meet you downstairs for a drink, and we'll go from there. I'll throw this in the fridge, see you downstairs guys. Alright guys, time for a drink review. I love the photo on this beer. This is called Up North Wisconsin Lager from One Barrel Brewing Company. They're out of Green Bay. 5% alcohol, again, up north. Love the, love the picture there. Okay, this is my daughter Ava Grace, and my son Kyle. Hello. Ava Grace is trying something here. We had to run down to the quick trip to get something for her. <laughs> She's having vitamin water. Zero sugar with love. Raspberry dark chocolate. Sounds good. Wow, that sounds weird. Raspberry dark chocolate water. Well, me and, me and my mom ran over, and I can guarantee it was a quick trip. <laughs> yeah, it was a quick trip they to the quick trip. Me with this one. They just opened one up in our uh, neighborhood right down the street. And Kyle saw this there. This is a new Mountain Dew flavor. It's called Star Spangled Splash with a blast of red berry flavor and it's got like a fireworks on there I guess yeah star spangled kind of fourth of July all right so that's what Kyle's having now when we went there we saw they had three of these which hopefully get our hands on the other two but they had one like this and then they had one as a different flavor that was white and a different one that was blue and they're all like part of the same like red white and blue oh really American so they have the red one white one and the blue one yeah, this one says it tastes like red berry, which hmm. sounds interesting. And so this uh, vitamin water is supposed to be water, but basically with vitamins in it. With magnesium, antioxidant, vitamin B3, 5, 6, and 12. Vitamin C. So instead of just drinking water to hydrate yourself, you're also getting a little of uh, needed vitamins. So that's a good deal. All right, up north Wisconsin lager. Let's take a look at this. Five percent. This is probably like it's just a basic beer. Better get six yeah. cups of coffee worth of caffeine in this. 
Well, you know Mountain Dew. For 5% alcohol, I have to say it's pretty light. Okay. I, I love when companies, though, when you have like this much left after pouring, you have like a decent amount after filling your Well, cup. yeah, because it's 12 ounce. You got, I think, a. Well, no, it's a 12 ounce. Oh, 20 ounce. That's why. Okay. As always, guys, I appreciate it. Stop by. Cheers, guys. Cheers to our viewers. Thanks for stopping by. We have another exciting announcement. This is going to be the last drink review that Ava Grace is going to be giving. Ever. As a 12-year-old. As a 12-year-old. Tomorrow's my birthday. Tomorrow hers is her birthday. She's turning 13, so she's going to be officially a teenager. Oh, my gosh. Then, two teenagers in the house. Yeah, And, no, and no. she's officially going to be too old for the channel, and this is the last video of her. <laughs> yeah. No. No, she'll be here. All right, guys, again, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. It's uh, it's a lager. It's definitely got a little more flavor than your typical light Wisconsin uh, yeah. beer. Don't take a drink. Mm. Don't drink all of it. <laughs> I'm not, but it's good. And I would recommend it. Nothing super fancy. You tell it's uh, definitely carbureted. It's got a nice carbureted. little head. Carbureted? Carbureted. Carbonated. <laughs> yeah, stereo. <there we> Carbonated. <laughs> Carbureted. <laughs> They don't sell cars or bikes that are carbureted anymore. They're carbonated. <laughs> but I would enjoy it, guys. If you're in Green Bay and you're up north in Wisconsin, give this a try. All right, David Grace, how is your raspberry dark chocolate vitamin water? I probably taste more raspberry, but it's really good. I really love the chocolate touch to it. Oh. It's. Can I'm you really taste a little chocolate? Yeah, I can. Wow. It's really good. That's very interesting. I definitely recommend it. It has lots of good vitamins and it's good. So, there you yeah. go, guys. All right, Kyle. How is your Star Spangled Mountain Dew? Now, weirdly enough, I was thinking red berry is such a made-up term, like blue raspberry or whatever. But I actually had something. I think I had it was like a sour patch gum, whatever. It was red berry. Weird enough, I was thinking of that when drinking this. Um, but I would say... Uh, it reminds me almost like Code Red, where it's like just, it's like kind of just that fruit punch-y flavor almost. It, it pretty much is basically Code Red with uh, another, with like different packaging, maybe. It, it, tastes, branding. <laughs> it, it tastes slightly different. I mean, it does also maybe, maybe just a bottle, whatever, but it, it tastes more uh, carbureted. Carbureted, yeah. <laughs> Would you have that over a regular Mountain Dew, or? Uh, I mean, if, if I'm in the mood for it, sure. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks again, guys. We're going to wait a little bit, enjoy these drinks, and then I'm going to go fire up the uh, Char Griller Auto Kamado. We'll get that thing heated up to around 225, and we'll smoke that tri-tip, hopefully for at least 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, to get hopefully a little bit of smoke flavor. This is going to be a quick cook. I'm thinking this is going to take no more than an hour from start to finish. So if you're looking for something quick and easy, this is definitely what you should do. Thanks again, guys. Cheers to our viewers. I'll meet you guys outside when I'm ready to fire up the Auto Kamado. Cheers. All right, guys. I'm going to start up the Auto Kamado. I just have some old charcoal in here. I'm not even going to add any. This thing's super efficient. And uh, like I said, normally I would do this at 250, but I think I'm gonna start at 225. I'll, I'll try at least get it stabilized there. Whoops, there we go. And I found the secret to this particular uh, smoker is you wanna start like this. Just one thing, let it uh, catch a little bit, and then we're going to close everything up and then set it to 225, turn that fan on and just let it slowly come up. Because if you torch the hell out of it or pour a charcoal full of coals in there, it's going to be too hot. It's going to take way too long to uh, come down. So just like that, you know what? I'm not even going to put the deflector in or anything at this point. I'm just going to put that grill over there. I'm going to keep it open for around... 10, 15 minutes, we'll come back, check on this in just a second. All right, guys, so it's been maybe like seven, eight minutes, 
it's definitely got enough coals going where we can set the timer on this now okay so we're going to close this up and like i said we're going to go for 225 we'll just get it stabilized there i might change my mind go to 250 d1 okay that's referring to this right here i already have it set because i knew it was going to be d1 and i found on this smoker if you just put it a little bit behind the one, <clears throat> it's perfect. So there All we right go, guys. guys. So far it's showing 89 degrees, 90. See, this is a secret. <clears throat> uh, do that one uh, tumbleweed, set it on fire, let it go for 10 minutes, make sure there's enough coal so it'll continue. Now the fan will take over, bring it right up, shut down. Perfect. I'll let this go for 15, 20 minutes because I don't think Monica is quite ready for me to throw the, this on. We're trying to time it just perfectly. So, uh, yeah, we'll let this go even for a half hour. We'll just let that uh, temperature stabilize. Be back shortly. All right, guys, it's been probably around an hour. I haven't been out here, but it's holding right, well, right now it's 222. Actually, I always forget to hold that while I'm doing this. All right. So we're going to put these tri-tips on. I'm going to add some wood chips. And you know what? The classic thing with uh, tri-tip, you know, is oak. And all I have, unfortunately, are these chips. I was hoping to have a couple chunks, but this will work as well. I'm going to sprinkle some. I'm going to put some right in the fire as well, just to get a little smoke going here. All right, now we're going to put in the heat deflector, okay? I don't want to leave this open t too long. And let's get those tri-tips on. <laughs> Perfect timing, guys. The train is coming through. Okay. Time to put these tri-tips on. These... <laughs> Woo! It sounds louder than normal because I'm out in the front of our house instead of in the back. And uh, yeah, clear line to the train. All right, we're going to put one over here. And we'll put one here. All right. And I'm going to put some probes in these. I don't think this is going to take long at all. It's okay, we'll go here. I'll try to go right and to the thickest part. All right, and this one will go over here, kind of the thickest part. this closed perfect timing other YouTube creators watching my <laughs> video I'm sure you can all relate okay let's get this cranking I haven't used this this is my thermal pro right, guys so here it is 156 160 the one that's 60 is where I took the probe that belongs to the char griller and right now it's reading 60 as well so there we go. I'll set this for 125 as well. I'll go inside. We'll see how long this takes. Let it do its thing. Hopefully I can get some smoke on this. All right, guys. Be back in a minute. All right, minute. guys. It's been 27 minutes. It's hit uh, 126. It says on the one, 118. Whoops. And the one on the char griller says 123. So I think these are pretty much ready to pull off right now. I'm going to pause this smoke right now. Let's take a look. So, I mean, come on, 27 minutes. Obviously, these, these haven't had a chance to absorb too much smoke. But I guess a little is better than nothing. All right. I'm going to see if I can keep these probes in here. 
while I do this. I can move these off and then I'm gonna get this fire cranking. Hang on, I gotta switch over. I'll be back in a second, guys. Now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna crank this fire up because we need to sear those uh, tri-tips. Don't look very appetizing at the moment. So okay. let's remove this deflector plate. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna move some of these hot coals. Move some of these other coals. Oh, look at this big piece, wow. Let's get that going, all right. Look at how fuel, fuel efficient the smoker. My goodness, so fuel efficient, I can't believe it. Let's crank this up to, I don't even know what the max, I think, I think it's 600. Is it 600? Let me see. Oh, it even goes higher. Let's do... Let's do 600. Nice round even number. All right, let's see. D5. So I'm going to close this here. <clears throat> and then right there, I'll move this to D5 which is pretty much just about all the way open. I'll put it right on five. All right, guys, let's see how long this takes to get up to that temperature. All right, guys, it's been one hour and 15 minutes. I uh, still kept the uh, probes in the tri-tips. One's 97, one's 88. Let's see. We're at 605, and this probe's at 96. So we're all in that general area there. So. I'll use my instant read from this point on. Yeah. Some nice looking tri-tips. All right. <laughs> Guys, here we are. I'm, I'm letting this fan <laughs> blow. I, I'm keeping the lid open, but boy, this thing is roaring. And I don't mind. When I'm done cooking, this will clean this grill out. And yeah, look at these. I haven't flipped them. I just turned them. Oh, yeah. They're looking good. Be back in a minute. Okay, let's see. Whoo! Yeah, this is definitely done. Oh, all right. I'll get this off. All right, guys. It's been sitting under foil for around 10 minutes. Oh, look at these. Man, oh, man. All right. Let's uh, slice it into one. See what we got. All right, guys, here we go. All right, let's set this one aside over here. All right, so you always want to cut against the grain, but tri-tips are kind of tricky. Like here, it's kind of going this way, but here it's going this way. So what I'm going to try to do here just kind of try to separate right at that point, which I think is right about there. And this will also give us a chance to see how it's cooked. Oh, guys, look at that. Oh, man. Right. All right, guys. So this part here, we're going to slice very thin just like this and obviously the points here on the tip were much uh, thinner will obviously be cooked a little bit more but look at this guys oh man you can just tell You guys 
guys see that? Look at that. Oh, man. That's why I love tri-tip. It's such a underappreciated beat, it seems like, because so popular in California, but out here, people like, maybe they don't, they don't know what to do with it, or who knows. But guys, if you can get your hands on this, I would highly recommend it. All right, now this one, we're going to have to turn this way. Yeah, because the grain's going this way, so... Okay, let's try this now. Look at that, guys. Man, oh man. All right. Go, guys, look at this. Man, oh man. <laughs> Back in a second. Wow. Welcome back, guys. I'm here with my wife, Monica, my Hi. son, Kyle. Hello. I sliced some up. Here, take it. Take oh my a piece. gosh, does this look good? It smells really and good. And look, it almost looks like I cooked it sous vide, right? I was a little yeah, worried I would overcook it, especially mm. since it was so thin. I thought, man. Wow. No. Mmm. Mmm. I like that seasoning too. You know, I'm a sucker for that. Is it Montreal? Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you no, think? the, what do you the think way of? it's cooked was good. Yeah. It's not. It's not sous vide. <laughs> it's so moist. It's not too chewy. It's not no. too. It's not dry. It's Do you taste cold. a little bit of smoke? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, all, it was only on the smoker for around 40 minutes, 45 minutes. That's so good. Yeah. Well, good. What do you think, Hal? What do you think? Um. I'm thinking tomorrow is Ava's birthday, and mm -hmm. we're going to cover that on video when we're going to Texas Roadhouse, mm -hmm. and I I think there's some things I won't be able to order now, because <laughs> no. this is just going to... Oh, I don't even attempt that. Put that to shame. Mm -hmm. I don't think they even have tried Didn't to. Didn't I tell you not that long ago, I don't even order steak anymore of any type at yeah. the restaurants, because... He does it better than anywhere I get at a restaurant, so I'm like, I'll just oh, get other well, things. I don't think they have tri-tip at the uh, well, Texas no. Roadhouse. But well, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No, this is dumb. But they should. <laughs> You're right, though, Kyle. Mmm. Well, that seasoning, really good, this too. Good. Really peppery, which I like on my tri-tip. I like peppery. It's very peppery. As you always, like guys, I appreciate you stopping by. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you don't, then whatever. The logo Long on my ball, shirt, as Kyle would say, is on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Click on that. It allows you to subscribe to my channel. Please do that. It really helps my channel grow. And thanks again, guys, for stopping by. Mm -hmm. for, every, for every like we get, Dixie gets a piece. Yeah, there you go. Come no, try, try that. Try that. She's going to be fat. Uh, no, she needs more pieces. Dixie, you heard what? that. You heard that. Dixie, tell people Ask like the video. Kyle, you want to try that end like piece? Like the video. See, she said it. Yeah, there you go. Try that, try that end piece. A little crusty. I like the crust. <laughs> Again, guys, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.